All right, guys, BLM here. We are back with a new video. In this video, I'm going to be going through every single U.S. season of Survivor and talking about who I would vote for at every final tribal council. Now, I rank my winners based on the level of dominance that they showed throughout the entire game. And who I would vote for is pretty much who I would put higher on my winner rankings. Obviously, just because I do not vote for the person who ended up winning doesn't mean I don't think that person deserved to win. Someone got the votes, they deserve to win. I'm just saying this is my opinion based on the information that I was shown from the show and from the game that was played. And also, obviously, I wasn't there. So obviously, my opinions might be different if I was, but this is just an exercise to see who I would vote for based on my philosophy on the game. At the time of recording, Edge of Extinction is currently airing, so I'll only be going over the first 37 seasons of Survivor. There will be spoilers for every U.S. season of Survivor, so don't watch this if you don't want to get spoiled. Now we have a lot of seasons to get through, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to be starting this off with Survivor Borneo, Rich versus Kelly. I think this is a pretty easy one, as I'm someone who thinks that if you need to win an immunity challenge to stay in the game, then you made a major mistake. So the fact that Kelly needed an immunity run is something that I don't really respect. While I don't think Richard played a flawless game, the way he strategically maneuvered around the game is more impressive to me, so my vote obviously goes to Rich. Now moving on to the Australian Outback with Tina versus Colby. This one's a bit tougher as I think Tina and Kobe played similar games being a duo for most of the game with both making somewhat strategic moves. I used to think I would vote for Kobe due to his immunity wins kind of as like a tiebreaker, especially because he didn't need those immunity wins until the final three. But after closer inspection, I think my vote definitely goes to Tina as she was able to convince Kobe to flip in the pre-merge and she was so well positioned that she was pretty much guaranteed to be in the final two and would have won against both Kobe and Keith. So my vote goes to Tina. Now for Survivor Africa with Ethan versus Kim Johnson. This is another pretty easy one. Kim didn't really do much for most of the game and needed two immunity wins at the very end, which obviously Ethan didn't, and also he was able to create a good enough relationship with Kim to get her to take him to the end. And while I do think Ethan was playing a losing game as he wanted to take Lex to the end, when he's up against Kim, I feel like my vote goes to Ethan. Now we're moving on to Survivor Marquesas with Vesepia versus Nalia. Now this is a pretty tough one for me because I do think their games are of a similar caliber. Vesepia was in the minority for most of the early game and voted incorrectly multiple times through the season, despite her playing more strategically than Nalia. Nalia didn't really play at all until the final nine, but at that point she was able to convince Pascal to flip the vote against the majority, and at the final four she was only put in a worse position due to Vesepia's immunity. Win. The tiebreaker here for me is that Vesepia needed that immunity win at Final Four to cause Nalia to have to win that final immunity at Final Three. So with a slight edge, my vote goes to Nalia. Now we're moving on to Survivor Thailand with Brian versus Clay. This one is extremely easy. Brian dominated the entire season, while Clay pretty much depended on Brian to take him to the Final Two. And while I hated Brian's journey management and thought Clay did pretty well in the Final Tribal Council, my vote still goes to Brian. Now let's move on to Survivor the Amazon with Jenna versus Matthew. This is another tough one as I think both of them played pretty flawed games. My problem with Jenna's game is that she needed those final two immunity challenges to get to the end and also she was willing to give up her game for Heidi. My problem with Matthew's game is the fact that he was on the outs for most of the game and only reached the final three due to the guidance of Rob Sesternino. But the thing is, is that he did vote with the majority more than Jenna so I do think my vote narrowly, narrowly goes to Matthew. Now we got Survivor Pearl Islands with Sandra versus Lil. This one is very easy for me. The thing I respect even less than an immunity run is getting voted out of the game and coming back. So while I do think Lil showed more dominance in the end game than Sandra, and was in the majority for the entire end game, I do think my vote would have to go for Sandra. Now we're moving on to Survivor All Stars with Amber versus Rob. This is another pretty easy one as Rob completely dominated the game from beginning to end. And while he did have a pregame alliance that helped him and also had some pretty poor jury management, his dominance of the game really makes it so I have to vote for Rob here. Now we're moving on to Survivor Vanuatu with Chris versus Twyla. Now this is a tough one for me because I do think Chris is a better player and I do think he would be the one I would root for. But I do feel obligated to vote for Twyla based on my criteria. She was always in the majority of the entire game while Chris was in the minority for the early post-merge, mostly due to his own mistakes. So while Twyla had some really abhorrent jury management, my vote would still go to Twyla, despite still rooting for Chris. Now we're moving on to Survivor Palau with Tom versus Katie. Now this is where my rules get a bit tricky. Tom did need those final two immunity wins to win the game, However, he did dominate the entire game beforehand, so while I would place him lower on my winner rankings for that, I think when he's up against Katie, 
who didn't really do much strategically throughout the game, Tom is far and away the more dominant player out of the two, so my vote goes to Tom. Now we're moving on to Survivor Guatemala with Danny versus Stephanie. This is kind of a similar situation to Vanuatu, where I do think Danny is the better player, but Danny was in the minority for most of the post merge. Or I do find Danny's rebound a bit more impressive than Chris's, as she did it entirely on her own. The difference between Stephanie and Twyla for me is the fact that Twyla always made the game move that was in her best interest. While she was never winning in any scenario, she always positioned herself the best so that she would be guaranteed to get to the end. Stephanie is the complete opposite of this. Stephanie makes some major mistakes by voting out Jamie, by voting out Judd, especially just because Rafe told her to do so. So while Stephanie was in the majority for more of the game, this would make my vote go to Danny as I feel Danny had more agency in what ended up happening in the endgame. Now we're moving on to Survivor Panama with Aris versus Danielle. This is another pretty tough one as I feel like both of their games are pretty similar. Neither of them played a flawless game and I used to think I would vote for Danielle due to her making less blatant strategic mistakes throughout. My opinion on Aris' game has kind of gone up over time due to him being such a massive target coming into the merge and with him being able to survive some pivotal votes due to his relationship with Suri. Now he did plan on going to the end with Suri which most people would think of as a mistake, but the thing is that he more than likely beats her if he gets there on the final two, and also he was able to convince Danielle to turn on Terry at the final three, so I do feel like now my vote would go for Aris. Now we're moving on to Survivor Cook Islands, the first final three, with Yule versus Ozzy versus Becky. This is obviously between Yule and Ozzy. However, this season's very wonky because the final three twist really shakes things up and really makes it so there's so many game possibilities that would have happened if it was an actual final two. Because in this situation, Ozzy more than likely wins the final immunity and votes out Yule, giving Ozzy the win in a 5-4 vote. Now, I do have a lot of problems with Yule's game that do harm his placement on the winner rankings, but against Ozzy, someone who relied on immunity wins and would have needed to win out if it wasn't for the final three twist, and despite Yule being greatly benefited by the idol still being playable at the final four, Yule completely dominated the game strategically, so obviously Yule gets my vote. Now we're moving on to Survivor Fiji with Earl versus Cassandra versus Dreams. This is another pretty easy one as Earl played one of the most dominant games in Survivor history. The only time the entire game he was on the outs is when Yao Man played his idol at the final six. But the thing is that he was never in danger anyway. Obviously here my vote easily goes for Earl. Now we're moving on to Survivor China with Todd versus Courtney versus Amanda. This is a pretty easy one as well with Todd and Amanda completely dominating this game. But I would give the edge to Todd as he was the one shown to be making a lot more of the strategic decisions and Amanda's biggest move which was orchestrating the James boot that was actually a plan that Todd actually mentioned a few rounds earlier so here my vote definitely goes for Todd now I move on to Survivor Micronesia with Parvi versus Amanda I think it's another pretty easy one even though I think they both play pretty flawed games Parvi could have been the first boot fair play hadn't quit and Amanda needed that idol at the final six another thing I should mention though is that to me a successful immunity play on yourself is it just as damning as needing an immunity win? That being said, I give Parvi a lot of credit for creating the Black Widow Brigade, as she was the one to bring in Alexis and Natalie into the fold, which was a pivotal move in the game, so my vote goes to Parvati. Now I move on to Survivor Gabon with Bob versus Susie versus Sugar. This final three sucks. They're all bad. Sugar played the most dominant game out of the three, however, all of her moves were based on emotion, and a vote for her would have been a wasted vote. So if it's between Bob and Susie, I would vote for Susie, I guess, since Susie was in the no for a longer period of game where Bob was on the bottom of every single alliance he was a part of. He needed immunity wins to get to the final four. Now, Susie did need the final four immunity, which did cause Bob to go to fire, but I feel like Susie was in less trouble throughout the game, so I guess my vote goes to Susie. All right, now we're moving on to Survivor Token Chains with JT versus Steven. Now this is the complete opposite of Capone where they both played great games, both completely dominating the post-merge. My problem with JT's game is the fact that again he needed to win those final two immunities which is something Steven didn't need to do. And also while JT was just naturally more well liked by the cast, I do feel like Steven did more work in social positioning and having a better relationship with people like Taj and Aaron. So at the end of the day, my vote would go to Steven. Now we move on to Survivor Samoa with Natalie versus Russell versus Mick. Again, this is a pretty easy one. Russell completely dominated the entire game, playing one of the most dominant games in Survivor history. I do fully understand why he lost, obviously, but if I was on this jury, my vote would 100% be going to Russell. Now we move on to Survivor Heroes versus Villains 
for Sandra versus Poverty versus Russell. This is a tough one because they all have a major flaw in their game. Sandra was actively trying to get rid of Russell at every opportunity and completely failed every single time. And due to her failure, she got to the end with him and she ended up beating him. Poverty played pretty impressively throughout the entire game. However, she did need to have that idol played on her by Russell during the Tyson vote. And with her being on the outs during the Danielle vote, which by the way Sandra was as well, it kind of lowers her standings for me. Then we got Russell, who after the Tyson vote completely dominated the rest of the game, but he clearly had some of the worst jury management in the history of Survivor. Now with Russell not getting any votes, it's really between Sandra and Parvati, and I would give my vote to Parvati over Sandra, despite her being saved by an idol, I do feel like her game was far more dominant than Sandra, who rarely got what she wanted and just kind of skated by. Now we're moving on to Survivor Nicaragua with Fabio versus Chase versus Sash. Now originally I would have thought that I would have voted for Sash, but after giving it more thought, I'm really impressed by Chase's game. Obviously I would never vote for Fabio due to his immunity wins and his cluelessness throughout the entire game. But Chase played a pretty dominant game throughout the entire season, despite being a bit too love struck with Brenda and probably playing a bit too personally at points. He was in the majority of the entire game and had really good social positioning. Sash played a pretty flawed game where he lost control after the Brenda vote and was able to become a swing vote a few lates later, but after Mortgage Gate, he was pretty much just taken to the end as a GOAT, so my vote goes to Chase. Next up is Redemption Island with Boston Rob versus Philip versus Natalie. Do I even need to say anything here? <laughs> Rob gets my vote. He played one of the most dominant games in Survivor history. I think this is pretty obvious. Now we're moving on to Survivor South Pacific with Sophie versus Coach versus Albert. This one's a bit tough because I do feel like they all play pretty strong games. Sophie and Albert do claim to be the puppet masters behind Coach, with Coach being the figurehead behind the Alliance and having shown to have made moves on his own, like roping in Cochran and Edna, I feel like for me, this is an easy vote for Coach. Now we're moving on to Survivor One World with Kim versus Sabrina versus Chelsea. Now this is a pretty easy decision. Kim has played the most dominant game of Survivor I have ever seen. As she wins against anyone in the game, and she was so well positioned where there was no chance of her ever going home unless Troyzan somehow found a way to use his idol in an effective way. Chelsea and Sabrina didn't play bad games, but Kim is just so far in ahead playing such a masterful game so she gets my vote. Now we're moving on to Survivor Philippines with Denise versus Lisa versus Scoopin. Now I do think Denise played a good game, but was rarely in control and usually was in the background, especially after the artist vote. Where from that point on, Malcolm is the one shown to be the strategic force behind the grouping, and I also dock points from Denise for trying to get to the end with Malcolm, where she would have lost in a near unanimous vote until Malcolm screwed it up for himself. Now Lisa and Scoopin, despite being looked at as goats, were the best positioned people in the game, and with Lisa creating the plan to get rid of Malcolm relatively early on, which got she got screwed over by by Malcolm winning immunities, my vote easily goes to Lisa here. Now we're moving on to Survivor Care Moen with Cochran versus Don versus Sherry. Obviously, this is narrowed down to pretty much Cochran versus Don, which they both played a pretty good game. However, I'm personally more impressed by Cochran's game due to his incredible social game and also him being able to convince Don to do things that were not in her best interest, like voting out Brenda. So here my vote easily goes to Cochran. Now we're moving on to Blood versus Water with Tyson versus Monica versus Jervis. Again, this is another one where it's pretty easy to narrow it down to Tyson and Jervis as they completely dominate the entire game, while Monica was pretty much the goat of the season. Now Tyson did make a pretty major mistake by not playing his idol when there could have been a possibility of a rock draw. However, he is the one that did most of the strategic planning and made better relationships with the loved ones like Sierra, Hayden, and Caleb, so my vote easily goes to Tyson. Now we're moving on to Survivor Kageon with Tony versus Wu. Come on. Obviously my vote goes to Tony. He played an extremely dominant game and was able to outplay Wu at every single opportunity. Though he did have multiple idols, he never actually had to use them and his lie about the Tyler Perry idol's power is masterful gameplay. And Tony convincing Wu to take him to the final two instead of Cass really makes it so there's no other choice other than voting for Tony. Now we're moving on to San Juan del Sur with Natalie versus Jacqueline versus Missy. This is another pretty easy one as Natalie completely dominated the entire end game. Though she was on the outs for the Jeremy vote, she was able to reintegrate herself with the Alliance and dominate from that point on, orchestrating the John and Baylor blindsides, with her using the idol on Jacqueline being one of my favorite moves in the history of Survivor. While well, I don't think Jacqueline and Missy play the worst games in the world, being in the majority for most of the votes, I think Natalie completely outplayed them and she easily gets my vote. Now we move on to Worlds Apart with Mike versus Carolyn versus Will. Now this is a really tough one for me. Now Mike needed immunity wins and an idol play the win out from the final nine. He's obviously not 
getting my vote. Now, Carolyn was always at the bottom of whatever alliance she was in and needed that idol at the final six to survive. Then we got Will, who really just didn't play the game for most of the post-merge, having stopped playing the game after he flipped at the merge. Now, I know a lot of people won't agree with this, but I would actually consider voting for Will. But at the end of the day, my vote would go to Carolyn, just because I feel like she played for more of the game and was able to survive some pivotal votes due to her, her own building of a relationship with Mike. Just slightly, my vote goes to Carolyn. Now we're moving on to Survivor Cambodia with Jeremy versus Spencer versus Tasha. This is another pretty close one between Jeremy and Spencer, where both of them were on the outs at various times throughout the game. Jeremy didn't need that idol at the final six. However, I'm not that phased by this one, considering one, it was a tie, it was a three to three vote. And really, he only needed his idol after Kelly played hers. Either way, they were going to tiebreaker, which meant that he was going to be safe anyway, so I'm not really going to take out too much from his game for this. Now, Spencer didn't play flawlessly, though, where he was on the outs for most of the pre-merge and didn't really make strong relationships with a lot of people on the jury. So overall, due to being in the majority for more often and not being in danger for more of the game, my vote would narrowly go to Jeremy here. Now we're moving on to Survivor Co. Wrong with Michelle versus Aubrey versus Ty. First off, Michelle never had any control throughout the entire game and had to have Joe get medevaced and also win the final immunity to get to the end. Aubrey played mediocrely in the pre-merge and would have gone home at the merge if Neil was not medevaced, but she did dominate the game from that point on. Ty played okay throughout the entire season, though he was in the minority for different points throughout the game, pretty much until Aubrey got him the flip. So overall, it would be between Aubrey and Ty for me. And Aubrey, though she did have a massive flaw there at the merge, did completely dominate the rest of the season. And if it had not been for Joe getting medevac, she definitely would have had a better shot at winning the game. So I do feel like my vote goes to Aubrey. Now we're moving on to Milano's versus Gen X with Adam versus Ken versus Hannah. Obviously, I would not have voted for Ken with him never really making a strategic move throughout the season and him pretty much following David to the final four. Now, between Adam and Hannah, while Adam is looked at as a more strategic player, I actually prefer Hannah's game as she was in the majority more often. The only time she was in the majority was during the Michaela vote. And also, Adam has played his idol multiple times, being shown to have incorrect reads over and over again, so I do feel like my vote goes to Hannah. Now we move on to Game Changers with Sarah versus Brad versus Troy Zan. This is a pretty obvious vote for me for Sarah. Even though I do have a problem with her getting the majority of the votes at the final six, she completely dominated that entire post-merge. And then Brad and Troy Zan were on the outs numerous times throughout the season, and Brad needed the win out to get to the end, so my vote goes to Sarah. Now we're moving on to Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers with Ben versus Chrissy versus Ryan. Obviously, I wouldn't vote for Ben. He needed three idols to get to the end and also needed to win that fire-making challenge. So, whatever. Between Chrissy and Ryan, I think my vote goes to Ryan. I know a lot of people say Chrissy got robbed, but in my opinion, Ryan got robbed. It's been stated in post-game interviews that Ryan would have had a better shot in the final three of Ryan, Devin, and Chrissy than Chrissy. That also said he was able to make great relationships with Devin and Chrissy that got him to the end. Chrissy didn't really have good relations with most of the early jury, mostly negative relationships with them. So at the end of the day, my vote would go to Ryan. Now we're moving on to Survivor Ghost Island with Wendell versus Dominic versus Laurel. Obviously, this one comes down to Dominic and Wendell. And I feel like this is a similar situation to JT and Steven. I feel like Wendell is the JT being more likable, but I do feel like Dominic did more of the groundwork, pulling in Laurel and Donathan and having more strategic relationships with people like Michael, Chelsea, Kellen. And also, Wendell had multiple opportunities to get rid of Dominic towards the end game, but didn't. So because of that, my vote easily goes to Dominic. And now for the final season, we're moving on to David versus Goliath with Nick versus Mike versus Angelina. And obviously this one comes down to Nick versus Mike. I do think Nick played pretty well from the second episode on to the final nine, but after the final nine, his game goes off the rails. With him probably needing to win those final two immunities, and then also him being blindsided numerous times at the Carl and Davey votes. Mike, on the other hand, played pretty decently to the final nine, but was able to completely dominate the game from final nine on, being the swing at the Carl vote, and pretty much being a major factor in every single vote afterwards. Now, while I do feel like both of them dominated the game at different points, for me, Mike was more consistent, and his dominance of the end game is more important to me than Nick's dominance of the early merge, so my vote goes to Mike. So there we go, that is every single season of US Survivor. By my calculations, I would have voted for 20 out of the 37 winners, so that's not too bad. I might do a video like this in the future for something like International Survivor or Big Brother, but that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video, so yeah, thank you for watching.